Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this webinar today presented by the WHA Virtual Library. I'm Tyler Ostapik, a new librarian with the WHA Virtual Library. And today I'm going to introduce you to an interesting tool called Browsing. The session is being recorded. The recording as well as a copy of the slides will be shared with you after the presentation. If you have questions, there's a questions option in the GoToWebinar box, which should be on the right hand side of your screen. Feel free to enter your questions at any time, and there will be some time at the end for any additional questions you might have. Before we get into browsing, I'm going to briefly mention the WHA virtual library services available to you. Then I'm going to introduce you to Browsing and show you a few of its most interesting features. If you're a WHA staff from an eligible community health agency or from an eligible personal care home, you have a number of electronic resources and library services available to you through the WHA Virtual Library. This includes access to a number of different information tools and resources, as well as literature searches, document delivery, and education and training sessions like this one today. Browsing is just one of the many useful resources we have available for you. What Browsing does is allow you to easily browse, read, share, and keep up to date on these scholarly journals available to you through the WHA Virtual Library. One of the things that makes Browsing unique is that it offers sort of a bookshelf style personalization that imitates the experience of browsing library or personal bookshelves. I'll be using the web version today, but Browsing is also available through iOS and Android applications, which means you can browse and read on a number of different devices. And most importantly, it's easy to use and allows you to access journals of interest in just a few clicks. So you can access Browsing from the Apps and Tools page on the WHA Virtual Library website. And I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So under Resources here, you click on All Apps and Tools, and then you click on Browsing. Now I'm already logged in here. But if you're not logged in, when you first click on that link, it may bring you to this Choose a Library page, in which case you can enter in WHA and click on WHA Virtual Library. And it may prompt you for your credentials, which you can enter and then click Login. And then once you do that, you should see this notice here saying access is provided by the WHA Virtual Library and it should bring you to the Browsing Library tab. As I mentioned earlier, Browsing is available on mobile and is free to download. You can download the app by clicking on the phone image in the top right-hand corner here. And then from there, you just need to select the appropriate app store for your device. You can begin browsing journals immediately, but in order to take full advantage of the features available, such as creating your own personal bookshelves, you'll want to create an account. To create an account from the main page, click on My Bookshelf and then click Sign Up. All you need to sign up is an email address and password, and then you also need to agree to the privacy policy. Because I already have an account, I'm going to click this Login button instead, and then click Login. Once you're logged into your account, in the top right hand corner of the screen, you should see your email address. From the browsing library page, you can look for journals of interest by browsing by category. So for example, we could click on biomedical and health sciences. You'll notice that there's sort of a little colored image of the cover of each journal to sort of simulate again that idea of browsing a library shelf, looking for a journal that pops out at you that may be of interest and then pulling it off the shelf, or in this case, clicking through. The journals are arranged by alphabetically by title, or you can arrange them by journal rank. Clicking on a specific journal will bring you to the page for that journal. So for example, we're going to scroll down here and click on advances in anesthesia. On the journal page, you can browse through different volumes based on the date they were issued on the left-hand side here. There are also a number of icons or options under each article. 
So these are all article titles. The PDF icon, like this one here, allows you to download the PDF full text directly from browsing. So if I click on this, it should open the PDF full text directly in my browser. If the PDF isn't available through Browsing, there's also a link icon, which will bring you to an external link for the article from a publisher website or a database, where you may be able to access the article through the WHA virtual library. So just to show you that again, I'm going to click on this link. And then it brings me to the provider website where I can click Winnipeg Regional Health Authority virtual library and click continue and then I can download the PDF full text from here. Under the article titles there's also a graduation cap which allows you to create a citation of the article in a number of different formats and there's also a share button which enables you to share the article link to your clipboard or via social media or email. There's also a folder icon which is particularly interesting because it allows you to save the article to your My Articles tab. So I'm going to save this whole blood in modern anesthesia practice article to My Articles tab. So I just mouse over the folder here, click on it, and then I'm going to save it to my general collection. And I get this little notification here that says the article has been saved to my general collection. So when I click on My Articles, you can see that this article has now been added to my collection. You can also create your own collections on specific subjects just by clicking on this create new collection button. So for example, you create a collection for diseases. And then we could add new articles on diseases to this collection so that we could go back to them and read them later when we have the time. If you're looking for a specific journal or a journal on a specific subject, there's also a search function that you may find useful. You can search by subject, journal, title, or both by selecting one of the three options in the top right here. So right now we have the results for both subject and journal. If we click on subjects, we get the one result for the subject, anesthesiology, or we can click on journals, and these are all journals that have this term in the title. Now, it's important to keep in mind when you're searching by subject that the subjects are very specific. So if I search anesthesia, for example, we have no matching results, even we, though we know there are quite a few journals in browsing on this subject. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're searching. If you get no results under a subject search, it doesn't mean that there isn't something there. There could be. You should just try using a different term to try to find it. And you also want to note that there's no easy way to search for a specific article in Browsing. There's only a way to search for journals. And this is intentional because Browsing is designed to emulate the feeling of looking at and browsing journals like you would in a library or on a personal bookshelf. If you'd like to search for articles on a specific topic from a variety of sources, it would probably be best to use a different tool or resource. That's not really what Browsing is designed for. Once you find a journal of interest to you, so for example, I'll go back to anesthesiology, and we'll look at the British Journal of Anesthesia. You can add it to your bookshelf using this add to my bookshelf button, so I'll do that now. And again, you get a little notification here saying the publication has been added to your bookshelf. When you're logged into your account, if you click on the My Bookshelf tab, you'll see a list of the journals that have been added. And here's the journal we just added. You're able to arrange bookshelves and bookcases and rename them however you'd like. And you do that by mousing over one of the journals, or sorry, mousing over the shelf list name and clicking on the pencil icon. And then you could change this, for example, to yellow covers and then click the check mark. And you can do the same thing for your entire, entire book case by mousing over, clicking on the pencil, and then changing the title. 
I like to arrange my personal books on my personal bookshelf by color, so that's what I've done here. But you could arrange the journals by subtopic or something much more useful. As you add journals, you can move them around and rearrange your shelves as needed. So if I didn't want this journal here, I could click on these three lines when you hover over and click move. And then you just choose a new location by clicking on the arrow. And because I want my red covers together, I'm going to move this one back here. Just like the bookshelves, you can also rename your bookcases and put different categories of journals in each bookcase. So for example, here I have a bookcase on nursing with various shelves for subtopics in nursing. You'll see these little numbers here with the red background. This indicates that there's new articles for these journals in browsing. So if I click through on this journal, all of the little circles here indicate that this is a new article that has been recently added that I haven't read yet. And I can mark this as read by clicking on it. So this is a great way of keeping up to date on new publications and new articles in journals as they're released. To show you how this works with another example, we're going to go to an empty bookcase here, bookcase three, and we'll create a bookcase for diseases. So I'm just going to hover over bookcase three, click on the pencil and type in diseases. And say we wanted a collection of journals on cardiovascular diseases to go on the shelf. We could type cardiovascular diseases and click the check mark. And then we can go back to our browsing library tab and type in cardiovascular. And we'll check to see if there's a subject on cardiovascular diseases. And there is, which is convenient. So we can click on that. And then if we're interested in the journal stroke, we can click through to that journal and add it to our bookshelf. And again, we get that notification. Now, it's important to note that when you add something to your bookshelf, Browsing doesn't necessarily know where you're wanting to put it, which shelf you want to put it on, or even which bookcase you wanted it. So you may have to go through your bookcases to find it. It usually appears in the first space available. So here you can see we have stroke in our anesthesia bookcase, and we want to move it. So we would just hover over and click Move and then go down to diseases and then click the arrow where we want it to go and there we go for shelf two say we were interested in kidney diseases as well we could type that in here and click on the browsing library tab and type kidney and we'll see if there's a subject so there's no, no subject in this case for kidney diseases or kidney. But keep in mind that doesn't mean that there aren't any journals on the subject. If we go to journal titles, we can see there's a journal titled kidney diseases. So we can click through to that journal and then add it to our bookshelf. Now again, when we go back here, it won't be where we want it to be. It will be in the first available spot. So we want to click on the three lines click move, go down to diseases, and put it in the spot where we would like it. For our next shelf, we'll take a look at eye diseases. And click the check mark. And we'll take a look to see if there's a subject. So there is for eye diseases, so we can click on the subject. And we get a list of journals with that subject. If we are interested in, say, the Egyptian retina journal, we can click on that and add it to our bookshelf. Again, from the My Bookshelf tab, we want to go up to the first available space, click on the three lines, click Move, and then click on our Diseases bookcase and put it in the appropriate spot. And we have one more shelf for diseases. and We'll use this shelf 
for immune diseases. Again, we can go back to the browsing library tab and type in immune diseases. Again, there's a subject, so we'll take a look at that and see what journals are available. And say the Journal of Autoimmunity was of interest to us, we could click on that and click Add to My Bookshelf. Get that notification, go back to our bookshelf. Again, we need to find it and then click Move and move it down to the appropriate spot. And once you're done going through and doing that, you'll sort of have a customized library containing journals of interest that you can easily browse as new issues are published, whether that be through your mobile device, on your computer. And it's a great way to keep up to date with new publications in the journals that you're interested in or that you're wanting to learn more about. And that's Browsine.